Hey everybody, I'm looking at this power wheelchair motor here today and I thought it would just be fun to share talking about it. Uh, this is a brushed DC 24 volt motor uh, going to a right angle gearbox to a wheel. Uh, there's also a disconnect up here. So this came off of a, uh, a power scooter or electric wheelchair and if I turn this, it disconnects the motor from the wheel for neutral. And so that's like if you're, uh, you just want to push somebody who's in that power wheelchair. And if I flip this back, now it's locked. But still, with the, the gear ratio that's on this, if this was a freely spinning motor, I should be able to spin this by hand. And I can't. It's locked in place. It's like a, a, a parking brake. And the idea there is it's for safety. So somebody's using this power wheelchair. As soon as they stop moving, Somehow or another, this actually locks in place so they can't accidentally roll away. Now, if we take a look at the wires, there's four wires here. And if we follow them up, two heavy ones go to the motor. So that's going to be our positive negative for the brushed motor. You can see the cover for one of the brush holders right there. And there's two skinnier wires that come to back here. Now those uh, happen to be the center two wires here. Again, this is 24 volts. So on my power supply, if I just give 24 volts, now listen as I make this contact here. If you can hear that okay, there's a, a pretty loud click coming from right here. And in fact, that reminds me quite a bit of a typical automobile relay. Uh, this one happens to be 24 volts instead of 12, but the same thing if I hook it up with uh, 24 volts, I can hear it click on and off. It's just this makes or breaks an electrical connection and somehow over here this is making and breaking a mechanical connection of some sort. So again with the relay, it doesn't take much power to overcome the little tiny spring that's in there and click over to make an electrical connection. Uh, very low power, we're at uh, 0.06 amp or uh, 60 milliamps. Now if I go back to this, it's quite a bit more. It's about a third of an amp and at uh, 24 volts that's uh, 8 watts. So that's not an insignificant amount of power there. And what that's telling me is that the spring that's in here is much heavier than what's in a, a relay and it's doing more work. So there's some sort of a powerful spring in here doing something. So why don't we take the cover off? Now I already removed a few screws just to make this go a little faster. And if we take off the cover, we see this kind of donut looking thing in here. Let's come in close. So we're here we have some sort of electromagnetic donut. It's held in by four screws. I already took a few out to make this go a little quicker. So I'll pull out this screw and then uh, we can take a look at it here. Underneath this is the end of the shaft uh, for the electric motor and if I try moving the wheel now it absolutely freely spins. But a moment ago with this on there, it didn't. So if I just kind of put that back. Can't move the wheel. Now I can. So what's doing that? Well, if we look on the back here, I can see that there's sort of a friction material in here. Um, kind of like what you might see on brake pads or on a clutch, something like that. And it's, it's pinched in there. It won't move. Now let's, uh, let's plug that 24 volt power back in. And right away I saw it move. And yeah, now I can move it around. I can spin it. Um, I'm going to wash my hands after this because you never know what kind of weird materials make up brake stuff. But uh, basically now it's loose, and if I kill the power again, now it's tight in there. And if we look really close, 
well, this is kind of impossible to light, but we'll give it a try. <laughs> Anyways, let's see if we can see something moving here. Well, I can see it, but it's very difficult. If you look uh, between kind of the more gold-colored material here and the silver, there's a little teeny tiny gap there. And we've got a big spring, and we get a little tiny mo bit of movement there. So basically what this is, is it's, it's an electromagnet and a spring, and those two working together make it so that uh, normally spring power just holds this kind of brake pad material in place, but when you apply power to it, the electromagnet pulls it away. Um, not very far, just, a, just, just enough to release this. So I'm hoping to use these motors for a remote-controlled lawnmower project, and if I was constantly using 8 watts to release the parking brake, times 2 because I have two motors, 16 watts, I mean, that's not huge, but it's uh, one more set of wires that I have to connect, um, and it's, you know, it's a parasitic drag. It's just draining down my batteries. So I think what I'm going to do is just remove uh, these little parking brakes and then put the, uh, the cap back on the motor, and that'll simplify things. But I just thought you might find it interesting to take a look at uh, what's inside here and uh, how this all works. And immediately after this, I realized I had a problem. And it's pretty easy if you just look at the screw holes on the motor. Right on the motor, we have four screw holes, but on the cap, we only have three. So what it is, is the cap screws into the parking brake and the parking brake screws into the main body of the motor. So if I want the cap on without drilling more holes or doing something like that, I still need the parking brake, but I need it to not work. So all I did was remove these three screws here to take the parking brake apart. And then I removed the friction plate, the backer plate, and the springs that were in there, and then just reassembled the whole thing and put it back on the motor. Then I could install the motor cap and have the whole thing look very nice when I was all done. This is something I was working on while building a remote control lawnmower. If you're interested in that project, please click the playlist to watch the videos.